Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to another live session on my Facebook page. My name is Joey, uh, I've been an artist for 10 years uh, and I decided to become an artist coach because I was done making music. Um, I'm doing this Q&A sessions on uh, Facebook way more often than just today. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is for you to, uh, yeah, you can ask me anything regarding the music industry, uh, such as today as well, you can just leave your comment as you want, um, you can ask me anything regarding the music industry, so don't hesitate, uh, just drop your question in the comment section here on Facebook, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. For everyone who's just checking in, uh, good to have you here, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a live Q&A session for me on my Facebook page. A lot of you may know me as artist Joey Suki, uh, but a few years back I decided to become an artist coach. Uh, and that's why I'm doing this Q&A sessions. What's up Ancho? Good to have you here. Welcome. Welcome to everyone who's checking in just now. Um, so yeah, <coughs> I decided to do these uh, Q&A sessions every now and then just to give you guys uh, answers to questions that you've been uh, running with for a long time. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to don't hesitate to question me. Drop it, just drop them down in the comment section and I'll be here to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, you can ask me anything regarding the music industry, so if you're an artist or if you're a DJ or if you're a producer and you have questions uh, about bookings or if you have questions about labels or publishing or how to get your music signed, or doesn't really matter. Um, as, long as, it, as long as it's a question and as long it's, as it's about uh, the music industry, I'm here to answer them all. So what's up Marcio, what's up Ancho, good to have you all here, good, good to have you all here, good to see that you've been following me for four years now, nice. I've been in India as well, um, good, to, uh, good to see you here again. So yeah, welcome to everyone who's just checking in. This is a live Q&A session for me on Facebook, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to answer me or to question me. Just put your questions <coughs> down in the comment section and I'll be here to answer them all. So. What's up, Josh? Uh, love this, Joey Suki. Keep doing your thing. Thanks, Josh. Means a lot to me. Means a lot to me actually that uh, I'm receiving a lot of positive feedback on these uh, live sessions, but also on my podcast. For for one, let me show you. For everyone who hasn't uh, seen them yet, I'm doing a podcast every now and then. Uh, yeah, which actually means. Uh, that in this podcast I'm talking with people from the industry or I'm giving you just my tips like I'm doing right now. So it really depends, but you can check the podcast on soundcloud.com slash joeysuki and there's actually a lot of information right over there. Or you can go to artistcoaching.nl where you can find like my, my five free tips to start your career, but loads more. So just visit it. It's artistcoaching.nl or go to soundcloud.com slash joeysuki to listen to the podcast. So first of all, Welcome back everyone, uh, nice of you to check in and nice of you to join me in this live session today. My name is Joey, I'm doing this Q&A sessions every now and then um, just to answer your questions about the music industry. So if you have any questions regarding the music industry, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So what's up Delano, what's up Raghav, what's up Luke van Dijk, what's up Adam, what's up Ancho, what's up Robert, good to have you all here. Really nice to see you all dropping the comments in the section, in the comment section, sorry for my English. Uh, good to see all the questions coming in. Let me go to the first question here. Um, let's see, Delano asked me, op opinion about blockchain. That's actually a good one. Uh, I haven't been that much into the blockchain thing. I've heard of it. I don't know that much about it, so I'm not really the, the best person to answer that question. Uh, if you could tell me a little bit more about it, I'll get into it as soon as possible, but I've heard it's a good thing, so... Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, Ancho asked me, I'm a DJ and producer from India, I want to know how to get signed uh, to some of the best labels and the best tips for this. Well, Ancho, actually the best tips there is, is just work hard and make music that is unique, because... Um, if you start making music and you sound exactly the same as Hardwell or if you sound exactly the same as Marty Garrix, you're just not interesting for other people because there already is a Hardwell and there already is a Martin Garrix. So you, sh you should try to uh, develop a sound that is really your own and is, that is really unique. 
Um, and through that way, labels will find you and that's the position you want to be in. So make sure you want to do a lot of, uh, you put out a lot of content about your career, try to put out a lot of photos, a lot of videos, uh, do things like this, Q and A sessions on Facebook, uh, do podcasts, just put out content, 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 and try to be the best in what you do. So if it's hip hop music, be the best one in making hip hop music. Is it dance music? Be the best in making dance music, but, but make sure it's your own sound because it's not uh, a good idea to copy someone else's sound because it's just not going to work. Sorry. Uh, so for everyone who's just checking in, welcome. Good to have you all here. Um, I'm doing this Q&A session on Facebook today. So if you have any questions regarding the music industry, if you're a DJ or if, or if you're a producer or whatsoever, and you have a question about anything, just drop them down in the comment section and I'll be here to answer them all. So let's go to the next one. Uh, Lucas, what's up? Dolores, what's up? Camille, what's up? Uh, Camille asks, is asking, are you still playing yourself? Always loved your stuff. Sorry, Camille, I'm uh, not playing anymore. I quit being a DJ uh, about two years ago. I did some small gigs, uh, but I just didn't like it anymore. So I decided to completely quit uh, as well with the producing. Sometimes I make music. I do have some records left, but I'm not sure if I'm going to release them. So. Sorry, but I'm focusing on the artist coaching today. Um, let's see, well, Camille is also asking, what do you think about people faking their way into the scene, buying likes, ghost producing? That's a good thing, actually. Um, ghost producing is something that has been going on for a long time. Uh, for, for instance, if you have a look at the Beyonce album, there's like 20 people working on one track. So. Ghost producing isn't really a new thing. It's just a new thing within the music industry, or within the dance industry, I think. Uh, and it's something that people didn't know that happened, and now they know. So it's kind of shocking for people. In my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of ghost producers because I would like to do everything on my own. Uh, but if you look at it as a business, it could be a good idea. Like if you're crazy good in DJing, but you just don't have the skills to produce and you need uh, music to be bigger, in my opinion, it could be a good step to do it, you know, you, you, you can be good in everything. So um, if you're the best in DJing, but you just suck in making music, but you do need records to be uh, to go to the next level as a DJ, it could be a good business model. I'm not the biggest fan, but it could work. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Uh, Adam is asking me, where can I give my demos for Dutch labels? I think a personal meeting in office. Um, Let's see, I'm not sure what you mean, but I think what you mean is that you that it's better to visit the labels than just sending emails. Uh, and I must say, I really agree with that. Uh, personal touch, like personal connection is always better than sending an email because everybody knows by sending an email, you will be dropped down in an email box with 50 other people and it's really hard to stand out with one email. So I always recommend to just Go to uh, seminars, go to uh, things like Amsterdam Dance Event, go to Dance Fair, talk to people, make sure they know you, make sure you know them. Um, and that's actually the best way for you to get in. Um, so yeah, personal contact, way better than email, but email is the easier way, of course. You can also try to send direct messages through Instagram, Snapchat maybe. Uh, it's something not a lot of people are using nowadays and it's really a good way to connect. So try to check that as well. Uh, for everyone who's just checking in, good to have you here. Welcome in my live session today. Uh, I'm Joey, I'm an artist coach and I've been a DJ and producer for about 10 years. And today I'm doing this Q&A session on Facebook for you uh, so you can ask me anything regarding the music industry and I'll be here to answer them all. So if you have a question, don't hesitate, just drop it down in the comment section and I'll try to answer them all. So let's go back to another question. Uh, Fatty Magdi. Hi Joey, good to see you again. I would like to know what the best way to gain audience and promote your music, other than Facebook sponsor. Um, the best way to gain audience and promote your music. I think a good way to do this nowadays uh, as a starting artist is using fan gates. I'm not sure if you know them, uh, but you can check out Hyped or you can check out Toneden uh, or Artist Union. Through this way you can give away free music. Uh, like bootlegs, like uh, original tracks, doesn't really matter. But people have to like your page or follow you on SoundCloud or follow you on uh, Spotify or whatsoever. Uh, and in this way, they still kind of pay, but in another way. But your audience will be growing because they have to like your page <coughs> before they will download your music. So 
Um, I think this is the best way nowadays to start as an artist. And once your audience is getting bigger and labels are getting more interested in your music, that's the moment for you to go to a label because a label can be a really good addition to your career as long as, as it's a good label. The smaller labels that just lack in uh, PR and lack in the promo stuff, in my opinion, that's not a smart idea. Then you can give it away uh, yourself. That's way better. But if, if it's a good label and they can assist you in every possible way that you can assist yourself, it's a good choice. So start off with the, the fan gates and afterwards when you're getting a little bit bigger and your audience is getting bigger and labels are getting more interested, that's the moment where you want to hop on the bus and join a big label. So what's up Rakesh, what's up Simon, what's up Lucas, what's up Marcio, what's up Leon, good to have you all here and to everyone who's just checking in, good to have you here as well. If you have any questions regarding the music industry, don't hesitate to, to sorry, don't hesitate to question, uh, to ask me the questions and just drop them down in the comment section and I'll be trying to answer them all. So let's go to the question from Lucas Fernandez. What's the best way to get enough money to live only out of music, ghost producing or DJing or both? Um, it depends, you know, one is not possible without the other because uh, if you want to live from DJing, you have to have a lot of fans, like uh, you have to be a little bit more famous if you can use the word. Uh, so it's really hard to build a bigger audience and make sure that you're interested for clubs to book you. So that's a really hard way, but once you're there, I think DJing is the better way to uh, make a living out of it. Uh, but ghost production can also be a really good way. Um, but it depends for who you're producing for. So let's say if you're making music for uh, David Guetta or uh, whatsoever, like the bigger artists, that's where you can really make a living <coughs> out of ghost producing. Um, but if you're making music for your neighbor like uh, that is just starting with, with his career, then it's getting really hard to live from ghost producing. So I, I would go for the DJing part, but that's because I like DJing better than uh, the ghost producing thing. But if you're making music for bigger artists, more famous artists, then ghost producing can be a really big thing as well. So let's go to the next one. Marcio Ferrer, what's up? Good to have you here. Hello Joey Suki, I adore your production, remix and songs. My question is, where does electronic music go with so many producers and little space on the scene? Good question, Marcio. Um, I think that's the thing that everybody's thinking about nowadays. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter how many people are in the scene. You have to make sure that you're the best and that you're the most unique in there. Uh, so this should only encourage, should only encourage you to... Um, spend a lot more time in your career, invest money, make sure that you have a best sound, that you have the best VSTs, um, just make sure that you're the best one out there. So I don't really consider it a bad thing that, it, that, there's are, that there are so many producers or DJs nowadays. I think it's just, um, I think it's really cool that, it, that once, it will, uh, once you will make it right now, you will be the best and it will be a bigger accomplishment than when there were like three other guys. Now there are like 300, 3,000 other guys. So just make sure you bet you are the best and you work the most of it and hard, the hardest of them all. Um, and that's the way to go. So let's go to the, another question. Welcome to Nasus. Welcome Ewa. Welcome Ancho. Welcome Jaraj. Welcome Rob Choi. Good to have you all here. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me and put your question in the comment section and I'll be here to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, let's go to the next one. Ancho, how do I get rid of mud in vocals? Whenever I work with vocals, it always sounds flat. Well, it starts off with, uh, <coughs> with the recording of it. If the recording sucks, it's really hard to change the dynamics of the vocal. So you should first check that one out. Like, if you are you recording it in a proper room? Uh, and are you recording it really dry, like so there's no um, space sound around it, so no reverbs and stuff, it's really dry. Um, and if that's not a problem, then you should have a look at the 500 hertz frequency, So because most of the time that's the area where all the mud is. Um, so yeah, it really depends on the situation, but it starts off with the recording, and if the recording is okay, you should check the fre frequencies around 500 hertz. Um, next one. Jara, show Joey, how do you go about working with vocalists and are there fees royalties? Actually a really good one because I get this question a lot. A lot of uh, producers are working for, of are looking for uh, uh, vocalists nowadays. Um, 
It can go both ways. Some vocalists ask a flat fee and some vocalists are okay with splitting the, the royalties. It's just something that you have to negotiate with them, like uh, if they are okay with a, with a flat fee, flat fee for, for just like, let's say, 200 euros. Or if they want to split uh, on the royalties, like if they really trust in the record and they want, they also think it's going to be a big hit, they're going to make a lot more if it's a hit and they are they are a part of the royalties. Then they're just going to take like once a time two hundred dollars and that's it. So uh, it's something that's negotiable and that you have to talk about with uh, the vocalist. But it's it's a common thing and you can you can do both. Welcome to everyone who's just checking in. I see the numbers are getting up, so that's a good sign. Welcome and good to have you all here. Uh, this is another live session for me. Uh, my name is Joey. I'm an artist coach and I've been a DJ and producer myself for the last 10 years. Uh, and today I'm focusing on uh, coaching artists. So this, um, this Q&A session is part of it. And if you're, if you're an artist and if you have any questions regarding the music industry, don't hesitate to ask me your questions and drop them down in the comment section. So let's go to the next question. Uh, what's up Joop? What's up Nick? What's up Miha? What's up Ewa? Let's see, Miha asked me, hey Joey, one question about production. I have some troubles with, my mixing, uh, with mixing my bass because my studio monitors don't have enough bass. How can I test the track so that I can make sure that it will sound good on big speakers in a club? Any advice? That's a good one. Um, I know that there are, I'm not sure what the name is nowadays, but they invented like some kind of vests uh, that you can put on or you can put on, on the back of your seat, which um, recreates bass. Uh, so your neighbors don't have any complaints, but you still feel bass. So maybe that's an option. I have to look it up. I'm not sure what the name was, but I'll have to look it up. Uh, but it's some kind of vest that you have to put on so you can experience the, the, the thrilling. Um, and the other way is just make sure that you that you get a subwoofer and uh, that you can hear it and feel it. So there's actually not another way, I think, because you need speakers that are, that can put it put out the frequencies that you need, like the lower frequencies behind 50 hertz or something. Uh, so you, or you need to, you need to get a, a subwoofer. Uh, are you gonna have to check out the vest? Um, I haven't used it before, but I heard a lot of good things about it. So um, yeah, just check it out. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Olaf, what's up? Hey Joey, how much does creativity make a difference for an artist if he has his own unique gimmick compared to his production skills? And, uh, and as a second question, do you think working hard also counts for a graphic designer as myself or do all these big labels have their standard people for these jobs? Good shit, Brabant. Nice to have you here, Olaf. Let's start off with your first question. Uh, so how important is it to be uh, creative and have your own sound instead of production skills? I think being creative um, stands above the production skills because, uh, for instance, I can hear the difference between this kick and between that kick. But if I ask my little sister who is just uh, listening to music and it doesn't understand uh, the, the theory behind the production, she will never hear the difference between kick one or kick two. You will hear the difference, I will hear the difference, but my little sister or your mother or your brother will never hear the difference. So the creativity, uh, the creative part from the production is, I think, is way more important than the production skills. Um, of course, in the end, it should sound good as well. But if the creativity is really good, I think it's better uh, to have that than just the production skills. Because if it's not creative, but it sounds really good, it's not a really good track, in my opinion. Uh, and the second question is... Do you think working hard also counts for a graphic designer as myself? Uh, or do all these big labels have uh, standard people for these jobs? Well, I think if you're a really good graphic designer and if you're, uh, if you're delivering something else than some, somebody else is doing at this moment, I think it's really interesting for labels to hire you. You, sh you, sh you should just make sure that labels know how to find you and they know what, what you can create. Uh, so maybe you should, you should just try to do the first uh, graphic designs for free and make sure that you get clients out of that. And if you get clients, you can uh, start charging like a smaller fee or a package fee for, uh, so you have to, you create the artworks, but also the Facebook banners and the SoundCloud banners and the YouTube covers and like a complete package. Uh, but I think it's just a matter of working really hard and work on your network, make sure you know a lot of labels and the labels know how to find you. So just starting on working on your network and be the best one out there. That's the most important thing. 
Okay, so everyone's just checking in. Uh, my name is Joey. I'm an artist coach and I've been a DJ for the last 10 years. Today I'm doing a Q&A session on Facebook uh, and I'm doing this like I try to do it every week. Um, if you're an artist and you have any questions regarding the music industry, don't hesitate to, uh, to question me. Uh, just drop down your question in the comment section and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So let's do the last round here. Uh, let's round things up. I'm gonna go to Fatty, Magdi, uh, I already did that, free music for following SoundCloud but not gaining any audience. Um, maybe you should try to uh, approach some blogs and make sure that you can, <coughs> can reach more people by using people who have a bigger uh, reach <coughs> than you. That could be possible as well. Uh, and just make sure that your track is everywhere uh, or available everywhere. That's actually really important. Try to uh, have a connection with people who have a big Spotify playlist and make sure that they will post your track in their Spotify playlist as well. Uh, it's just a matter of putting in a lot of work and make sure you know the right people and just being really humble and hopefully they will um, they will use your track in their playlist or they will play it on a, on a radio show or whatsoever. But you have to make sure that you connect with people who have a different reach or a bigger reach than you and they will play your track or they will use your track so that people from their scene know you and now they will start following you and that's how all things go. So it's really hard, it's really hard and it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of work but it's worth it. I would start doing it right now. It's the best thing out there. Best thing out there. Okay, so last two questions. Uh, let's go to Driss Areski. Uh, Joey, can you tell us something about your Revealed recording experience since you had released many tracks on Revealed? I had a really great experience with Revealed. I, uh, I actually was one of the first artists uh, to release there. I think my EP was fourth or fifth release. Um, but I have a really good experience there. I really like the team. Uh, it's a really professional, high level label. Uh, they know what they're doing and they're always trying to be uh, one step uh, ahead of everyone else. So that's what I really like. Of course, Harswell Hartwell is a really nice guy and uh, he's a big boss in the industry. So all my experience with, with Revealed are really great. Uh, also, the events that I played for them are really great. So no bad words there, just good ones. Okay, last question of today. Olaf, thanks Joey. Already got contacted by Wall Recordings. How to trim to keep it hot? I'm not really sure what you mean there, but... Uh, already got contact by Wall Recordings. Now trying, oh, trying to keep it hot. Okay, great, great, Olaf. I wish you the best of luck here. Uh, so yeah, everyone, thanks for watching again today. Uh, I really like to do this again. Uh, hopefully you liked it as well. If you're interested in the coaching thing uh, or maybe a masterclass, I'm also doing masterclasses every now and then. So just visit artistcoaching.nl. Uh, you can, if you're a starting artist, you can download the f my first free tips uh, how to kickstart your career there as well. There's a lot more info if you're interested. A free podcast uh, where I talk with, like for instance, Matthijs from Revealed Recordings, uh, who is talking about the label and his experience as a manager from Hardwell. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of free material there as well. I will be doing this Q&A sessions every, I try to do this every week, so just keep an eye on my Facebook page as well. And follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, that's at Joey If you have any questions during the week, don't hesitate to send me a direct message through all these platforms and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. For now, I just want to thank you all for watching. Uh, have a great day. Here it's night, so I'm uh, going to bed within a few hours. But thanks again for watching uh, and see you next time.